Good afternoon. I want to start by asking everybody to imagine something. What if you had 1.8 billion, billion with a B, dollars to invest to make our community better? What would you do with it? Some of you might invest in parks, others in libraries or roads or arts programs. Consider this. With a better education system, all of those investments would be possible. Each potential graduate who fails to finish high school costs our community $292,000 over the course of their lifetime. That's $292,000 per dropout. That figure represents the money we invest in government programs, incarceration, and the loss of taxes paid. Over the last decade, before the current leadership and IPS began, over 6,000 students failed to graduate from the Indianapolis Public Schools. That costs us $1.8 billion over the course of their lifetime. That's enough to pay for over 800 parks, to upgrade over 1,400 roads, to build almost 500 libraries, and almost double the cost of Indianapolis's Lucas Oil Stadium. Those figures are important, and they represent some of the benefit of improving our education system. But improving our education system, for me, is not about dollars or parks or libraries. It's about the moral imperative to make sure that all kids have an opportunity to fully develop their talents. Look, I'm the father of three, and I can only imagine how heartbreaking it would be for a parent to send a child to a school that isn't meeting his or her needs. Yet for too many low-income parents in this country, that is the sad reality. When I hear those dropout statistics, I think about those parents and about those kids and how we have failed them. To solve this problem, we need to fundamentally change our urban education system. And that's really hard. It requires everyone to care because there are powerful forces that resist change. All across the country, people have been trying for decades to, to fix public education, and we're still failing far too many kids. The good news is this. We know how to fix our urban education problem, but we need to stop looking to the states and the federal government to drive change. While we need the states and the federal government to create the right policy conditions, top-down imposed change from the states and the federal government will do little to change our education system without, without a local implementation strategy. Sweeping change will only happen if local communities develop and execute on strategies for fixing their schools. That means that districts and charter schools and mayors and nonprofits and universities need to work together to improve how we deliver public education. Indianapolis is one of a handful of cities nationally that has fully embraced this local approach to fundamental change. To explain this, we need to unpack three things. First, what have we been getting wrong? Second, how can we get it right? And third, what's the special sauce in Indianapolis's approach, and what can others learn from it? But before we do that, we need to answer a fundamental question. Can students from economically challenged backgrounds do as well in school as their more affluent peers, given all the challenges that they face? Unfortunately, too many people still question this. So I want to introduce you to a young woman from Indianapolis named Teriana. Teriana has faced many obstacles. She's being raised by a single mother who's balancing parenting, working, and taking college classes. Before Teriana entered Avondale Meadows Academy, a local public charter school, Teriana scored in the bottom 5% of students nationally in reading. Teriana had trouble focusing, and she often acted out. So Avondale Meadows intensified her academic coaching and hired a behavioral specialist, and they saw dramatic improvements, even as, even as Teriana went through a devastating personal hardship, the murder of the only father figure she knew. But Teriana persisted, 
and today she is a model fifth grader, now scoring in the top 20% of students nationally in reading. It's a great turnaround story, and it is proof of what is possible, but Terriana is not a rare success story at Avondale Meadows Academy. Only 10% of students entering Avondale Meadows Academy are performing at our kindergarten ready. But by the time they graduate from fifth grade, almost 80% of those students have caught up and are performing at a fifth grade level. Which brings us back to our first point. What have we been getting wrong? If schools like Avondale Meadows Academy and the hundreds of other schools like it are getting amazing results for kids, why isn't every similarly situated student in a great school? Well, for too long, we have looked to solve education problems from the top down with state and federal mandates, and we have focused far too little on local implementation. Let me give you an example here in Indiana. In 2011, the Indiana legislature passed a law designed to improve the quality of the teaching profession. The law required that districts more rigorously evaluate teachers and base their pay in part on those evaluations. The law won widespread praise, but there was little local buy-in, and so it wasn't implemented very well, and not much has changed. In the most recent teacher evaluations in, in, in Indiana, 98% of teachers were rated as effective, while only 52% of students passed both the math and English portions of the state exam. And those numbers just don't add up. And this is just one small example of the shortcoming of the top-down approach. Which brings us to our second point. How can we get it right? Well, by now you know my answer. Drive change locally. You may recognize these two people. They're former Indiana State Senator Teresa Lubbers and former Indianapolis Mayor Bart Peterson. What they did over a decade ago set Indianapolis on a course to be the hub of education change that it is today. Let me tell you the story. In 2001, Senator Lubbers pushed legislation that made Mayor Peterson the first mayor in the country with the power to authorize public charter schools. Sound unusual? Well, it worked because Mayor Peterson developed a charter school system to meet the needs of Indianapolis. Not only did he develop a local strategy for screening applicants and holding schools accountable, but he also developed a local strategy to make sure that the schools had the talent they needed to be successful, a strategy that Mayors Ballard and Mayor Hogsett have built on. Indianapolis was the only city in the state that had a city local focused strategy for building charter schools. And you won't be surprised to learn that Indianapolis's charter schools are the best in the state by far. How do we know this? Well, three Stanford University studies have found that Indianapolis's charter school students are getting superior academic results. Compare our experience with the experience in Ohio where they didn't have a local strategy for driving or for building strong charter schools and where similar Stanford studies found that the charter school students in Ohio actually do worse than their traditional district peers. To drive successful change in education, you need a local strategy. That's what Indianapolis has been doing well, and it's paying off. Which brings us to our third and our final point. What's special in Indianapolis, and what can others learn from it? Indianapolis's approach to locally driven change began with charter schools in the early 2000s, and it continues today in an even more powerful way in the Indianapolis public schools under a bold board and a bold superintendent. So what's fundamentally different here? Well, educators are now empowered to propose new ideas for schools in the district, and if selected, are given the resources to launch those schools. And once those schools are up and operating, the district gives all the authority to run those schools to those educators. It's the same approach that's worked well for successful charter schools. The educators in the building determine what the curriculum is and who the staff should be and how to spend their budgetary resources. Teachers are empowered to teach and leaders 
are empowered to lead. And schools are held accountable. If they don't perform, they're closed. If this all sounds basic, well, it's not. It is almost unheard of nationally for there to be a program designed to give educators the opportunity to propose new ideas for schools in a district, and then if selected, to be given the resources to launch those schools. And in most districts around the country, decisions about what happens in schools are not, made by the are not controlled by the educators in the building, but are controlled by distant bureaucrats. Indianapolis has formed a unique partnership that's changing all of this. The Indianapolis Public Schools, the Indianapolis Mayor's Office, and the independent nonprofit that I run, the Mind Trust, are working together to create more of these schools that are designed, built, and launched by the educators in the building. Schools where the principal has the final say and where teachers teach the way they think best. We call these schools Innovation Network Schools. And after just a few short years of this partnership of the district and the Mind Trust and the Mayor's Office, 17 schools have launched or are under development. Now, every Indiana district has an opportunity to create Innovation Network Schools. But out of the state's almost 300 districts, how many do you think have? Well, the answer is one. And that is because a bold superintendent, an innovative mayor, and a local nonprofit partnered together to develop a local strategy for how to use the Innovation Network School law. Here's an example of an Innovation Network School. Mary Emma Carson, an award-winning local educator, had a vision for creating a language immersion school for low-income students. She proposed her idea to our partnership, and we saw promise in it, so we supported it. And today, over 500 students are, are in her school, all of whom will have the opportunity to graduate sixth grade fully bilingual. And as we create more innovation network schools, We'll have fewer students fall through the cracks, and we'll have more success stories like Terrianas. You might ask, with all of this momentum in Indianapolis, why isn't every student in a high-quality school? Well, the answer relates to the theme of this conference, scale. We have many great schools, but we need many, many, many more. The good news is we know this, and our community is focused on scale. The partnership of the Indianapolis Public Schools, the Indianapolis Mayor's Office, and the Mind Trust is working to create dozens of more schools and working to make sure that they have the talent and community support they need for success. But this will take scale, and it will take time, and it will take you. So what can you do? Well, the most important thing you can do is don't. Don't be satisfied with the status quo. Demand that your local leaders, your districts, your mayor's offices, your universities, your nonprofits, develop local strategies to drive change in education. And don't ever, ever, ever stop believing that we can do better. Fixing our nation's public education system is our community's and our nation's most fundamental challenge. Sure, it will allow us to build more parks and libraries and roads but there is something much more fundamental at stake. We need to fix our education system because of Terriana and the millions of other students like her whose lives can and will be transformed because of it. Thank you very much.